Welcome everyone. We're going to get started in just a few minutes, a couple more minutes as people join. We're glad you're here today with us. Uh, we hope you're ready for summer reading and we're excited to see all of the great marketing things you guys are already doing, but hopefully you can gain a tip or two on working with media in our workshop today. I know Lavage has been a big help for me and this is really for my benefit. And then also, um, I hope you guys can also benefit from it as well. Lavage is a great resource for us. And we really want to help Arizonans remember that summer reading is a thing and libraries are back open in full. And so we're excited to hear what uh, Ilana has to share with us today. One more minute and we'll get started. All right, we are going to get started. Welcome to this training uh, for media training, working with media, especially as you promote your summer programs. We are excited to have Ilana with us today from Lavage, who is helping the State Library promote uh, summer reading. And we have been learning a lot about summer reading this year. I mean, about marketing this year, and we are excited to hear what she has to share with us. Hopefully, we'll all gain some tips and tricks on, you know, working with media and all the things we need to remember. So the Arizona State Library decided to do a summer reading marketing initiative to encourage increased literacy during the summer. Uh, you know, summer is often a time when reading tapers off and the Arizona State Library decided to really put an extra emphasis on helping those in Arizona. Remember that libraries are a great place to continue their learning all summer long and for all ages. Um, the objective of our marketing campaign is to increase the number of library patrons that engage in summer reading in your libraries across Arizona with a specific goal to increase participation to 100,000 Arizona citizens participating in library programs. Last year, we were under just under 75,000 participants, and so we're excited to push to reach that 100,000 mark this year. So we have been working with the public relations firm, Lavage, to design strategies and tools for statewide summer reading. And the campaign has included public relations support through bylines, op-eds, and press releases, as well as messaging on the importance of summer reading at local libraries. So I'm going to turn the time over to Alana now to hear what she has to share. Well, thank you for the wonderful introduction, Donna. Um, as Donna mentioned, we are partnering with um, the State Library to help promote um, the summer reading program. Um, and so just a little bit on Lavage. Uh, we are a full service marketing agency um, that includes traditional media, digital media, and of course, public relations and publicity. So. I am a senior account executive on the public relations team um, and part of two members of the PR team that are working on the campaign for summer reading. So my colleague, Megan Wall, um, she isn't with us today. She's enjoying the beach over at Hilton Head on vacation. So we're missing out on her presence today, uh, but hopefully you'll have a chance to work with her in the future. Um, and she is the associate director of public relations. So. 
feel free to go back and take a look at our bios and learn a little bit more about us. Um, we're always happy to talk with you guys if you have any questions after the training um, or just want to run some ideas for PR through us. Um, we're always happy to be a resource, but um, of course, you know, never hesitate to reach out. So um, without further ado, we'll just jump into the training. Uh, so I'm not sure how much uh, background you guys have uh, specifically individually on working with the media, uh, but we will go through just the basics of the communications process, what our role is as the PR partners for the state libraries, um, and how we're really promoting uh, the summer reading campaign and coming up with key messages to help build the brand awareness um, of what's going on at the local libraries this summer. So um, once we go through those components, we'll get right into the media training, go over a few tips and tricks for feeling your best during any interviews with media, um, as well as handling some difficult questions. Um, then if we have time, we can jump into some practice. I think since we do have about 22 participants, we might not be able to all um, do the practice together, but you can definitely use what I've set up um, as kind of some homework so you can go home and practice on your own time as well. So first and foremost, um, as part of the public relations team supporting the state libraries in this campaign, we do all of the media coordination. Um, one of the tactics we're really striving to hit on to promote the summer reading campaign are setting up interviews with media to get the word out there. Um, so we call this earned media, where we share your story um, and we set up those interviews for you to speak with media. Um, there's a few different ways this could happen. You know, we're familiar, you're familiar probably with broadcast. So um, AZ Family, ABC 15, Fox 10 and 12 News are kind of the big players. And that's really for great visual stories. Whereas print um, and online, can include some um, visual components, but that's really uh, a time to dive deep into the services and the programs that you offer. Um, so those interviews look a little bit different, but the process looks the same. So we pitch the story as the PR team. We work all the angles to determine what is going to suit best for broadcast media versus that online or print platform. Um, then we work with you to ensure the opportunity fits your brand, fits your goals, fits the messaging that you want to get out there. Uh, and then once the interview is secured, we brief you on media, the personnel, um, who's going to be talking to you and what kind of stories they typically cover. Then we'll either create or screen the projected questions. Um, sometimes media doesn't provide those in advance, but if they don't, we will help you come up with those um, so you're prepped and ready to go for the interview. And that includes drafting key messages and preparing talking points for you so you're comfortable speaking to the media and answering those questions. And then it's on you. You do the interview, you smile, you make the good impression, um, and it's easier than it sounds. And after that, we follow up with, with the reporter and provide them any visuals, any additional details they need, um, any data points that we wanted to clarify. So we're really the in-between for, for you and the media. Um, so what's really, really helpful uh, and beneficial about working with media is that it helps build organization awareness. So once we um, continue to help you build those relationships with the media, these positive interactions, um, they're going to help drive awareness to the summer reading campaign. Not only that, but they'll help demonstrate your strength as a spokesperson um, and your value to stakeholders um, in your local library or even at the state library. Uh, and then of course, we will be promoting community outreach efforts, um, building awareness there. So you have more involvement in your programs and really educating the public on some of the important details and benefits of summer reading. So the world's a little different now than it was in 2020, uh, before 2020, thanks to COVID, it's changed a little bit how we work with journalists. So there are some things that are different now and um, 
really what's changed is that we have to be more understanding um, and more ready to jump on quick, quick deadlines. So in 2020, um, a lot of change happened in the organization for, you know, the actual organization for these media outlets. Um, some people got laid off, some had to start taking on additional areas of coverage. Um, so the, the amount of people there able to take on stories is smaller. So people are researching and drafting multiple stories at once. Um, and this can be a little difficult uh, because they want to do things now. Um, so a lot of the media interviews we set up are on a tight deadline and the turnaround time is quick. Um, but the good thing about that is they're always looking for interesting stories to cover. And that helps us build a good relationship with you for them um, that helps you then be a source that they can keep returning to. Um, and that's really what we want to help you do this summer. So not only are you promoting um, the great program, but they can come back to you year round with questions about reading, um, education, and any other programs that you have going on throughout the year. Um, so one other thing I do want to know on this slide, the second to last bullet, um, you know, we will help you prepare um, and work closely with journalists to make sure you get the best story, but we don't control the media. So even if we are, um, you know, hitting all our talking points, sometimes the angle can change and the story might not be exactly what we imagined. Um, the circumstances or the chances of this happening are pretty slim, but I do want to make sure um, that everyone does have that knowledge going into any media opportunities. Um, just because it helps you, you know, think on your toes and remember that things do change. Um, but as long as we're prepared, we'll do the best that we can. So we'll get into some tips and tricks. Um, one of the easiest things to do to make yourself feel more comfortable is to look good. And, uh, you know, it sounds kind of cliche, but, you know, when you look good, you feel good, and then you perform good. So um, a few of these tips and tricks are really focused on your wardrobe and how you can, you know, present your countenance um, to kind of give off that confident and, um, you know, expert uh, aura, I guess you could say. So what we like to recommend for wardrobe is to wear solid pastels or dark clothes. Um, jewel tones show up really, really well on TV. So we like to recommend dark greens, navy blues, burgundy and maroons. They are very flattering um, and look really well or look really good on TV. Uh, we like to try to get away from white or black because they can wash you out, especially for on-camera interviews. Um, and that also goes for loud prints. Anything that could be distracting on your shirt um, is kind of a no-go. So solid colors and jewel tones are usually the go-to. Um, so some tips for how you present yourself. Um, it's really important to be more animated than usual um, for in-camera interviews. If you're not animated, your expression looks pretty flat. I don't have a problem with that because my face is very, very expressive. Um, so it's <laughs> easy for me to get away with just acting normal. But if you kind of have, um, you know, a more relaxed face, um, making sure to smile, um, to use natural mannerisms will help you come off more authentic and will help you look better on camera. Um, one of the most important things about in-person interviews is making sure you look at the reporter and not at the camera. Um, when you are speaking to a reporter, it's important to know that it's really just a conversation. Um, you're the expert and they're asking questions because they wanna know what you're talking about and they wanna know you know, what you know. So um, when you look at the reporter, one, it'll make you feel more comfortable. And two, it does actually look like a conversation. Um, whereas if you look at the camera, it looks like you're talking to the people watching the broadcast. And it's not as um, desirable as you would think that would be because it gets quite uncomfortable if you're just staring into the camera um, and people are like, why are you looking at me? So definitely look at the reporter. Um, when we are on site, 
you have a PR person there to support you. Um, we typically like to have a PR person to support you there on site anyway. And we'll always remind you to look at your reporter and they'll remind you too, because that's one of their favorite tips to give you too, especially if you're not um, really familiar with doing media interviews. So don't worry, you'll get plenty of reminders, but that is kind of the most important thing to remember. Um, and then one other thing to note is it's totally okay to make small talk before an interview. If that makes you more comfortable, um, if you wanna talk to the PR person that's on site, whatever is gonna make you feel more at ease, you can do. Uh, but the one thing to remember is that if you're talking to a reporter, everything you say is on the record. There really isn't anything off the record. Um, so even though they might not be recording, do know that they can use what you say as a quote um, and they might add that into the story. So if you're making small talk, um, just talk about the weather, you know, what you're doing for the rest of the day, what they're doing for the rest of the day, really keep it to that small talk that's focused away from the content of the interview. And then of course, this goes with being more animated, show enthusiasm, smile, um, you know, act like you're thrilled to be talking about whatever you are sharing. I'm sure you probably are. So just make sure that comes across by um, having that animation, having that smile and um, really projecting your voice. So even though we are headed back to in-person interviews, uh, because of COVID, the virtual interview format has become really, really popular. Uh, and probably by now you're comfortable using Teams and Zoom and Skype to do all your meetings, um, but still it's important to practice using the platform before you do do the interview. Um, some of the things we want you to practice are actually speaking to the camera on the top of your computer screen. Instead of looking at the reporter as you would do for an in-person interview, you wanna look at the camera screen because once that is recorded and packaged up into a nice segment, um, it'll look like you are making eye contact with the reporter. So one of the tips that we like to encourage people to do is maybe use a piece of paper to cover the screen so you're not looking at yourself or the reporter or to add a sticky note right underneath the camera that says, you know, look here, um, whatever you need to do to remember to look at that little webcam um, instead of roaming around your computer screen. It can also help, help you stay focused on the line of questioning um, and not get distracted by whatever is going on around you. Of course, we hope that um, you'll set yourself up in an environment where you will have minimal distractions. Um, so we encourage you to pick a quiet space, find a room that has good lighting, um, and then silence your phone, turn off computer notifications, anything that could distract you from the interview. Um, one of the things that we also like to suggest, it's not necessary, but if you don't have a room that has good lighting, Amazon does sell ring lights for, I think like $20, um, and they can, you know, be shared throughout anybody in, in your library doing other content as well. Um, if you have social media and you want to do some videos, ring lights are really good for helping step up your production value. So it's an investment that isn't too much, um, too expensive, but it can help you look really good on screen on recording, whether, like I said, it's for our media or maybe a, um, something you're producing for social media. Um, so again, same thing with in-person interviews, smile, um, relax and smile. Smiling, I'm not sure if this is how it is for everybody, but I think it makes us all feel more confident and more comfortable in getting our message across. So whatever you need to do to help you feel relaxed and prepared um, is a thumbs up from us. We do have on here, roll your shoulders out, shake out some tension. Um, just know that, again, you're the expert and you have all the knowledge, so you're going to do great. Um, another thing to note is that for both virtual interviews and in-person interviews, they go by a lot faster than you expect. Um, these are usually like five minutes of video of recording, and then the reporters, when they go to edit, 
pare down your messages um, and you know it can turn into a minute or two minute long segment. So um, it's, it's not as bad as you think when you're in front of the camera and it won't take very long um, to get it all taken care of. So know that and hopefully that'll help you feel a little more comfortable as well. So sounding your best, um, as we mentioned, you know, smiling, showing enthusiasm, being animated are all going to help your voice sound better um, and sound really well um, for coming across and, and, and sounding authentic in your interviews. But one of the things that we like to set you up for is knowing your foundational messages. Um, We'll go into it a little bit later when I'll show you an example of a briefing document, which is how we help you prepare for interviews. But the key messages are the most important part of the interview. Um, so whether that's talking about the summer slide and those statistics or a new program that you have that's supplementing summer reading, um, we'll go through those with you and work it out so you are very comfortable talking about what's going on at your library. Um, and again, like I mentioned, these interviews go by quick. They're usually just five minutes long, and then the reporter will edit down the important bits to make like a minute or two minute long segment. So knowing your key messages and using those while you're speaking with the reporter will make sure you're getting the most important messages across, and they'll use those good sound bites in the final segment. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, smiling, being enthusiastic but also speaking clearly and maintaining volume. Um, so often we see people that will, you know, have their um, laptop kind of pushed back and their neck will be really high up here or they'll have a double chin. Um, so that's not really conducive to having that good volume that comes across um, and is good for that recorded segment. Um, another thing is answering incomplete sentences. We all learned this in elementary school when we were, you know, rewriting our sentences, um, but reframing the question back in your answer will also help um, the reporter use those good sound bites and make sure you're getting your message across. Um, if you have any questions about that, um, just remember, don't just say yes or no, um, and I think you'll be good. So just some big points that we want to drill into your brain. Um, if the interviewer makes an incorrect statement, don't repeat it. Uh, this is again where you can use the question in your answer um, to make it more clear and more correct. Um, you can also say, no, that's not quite correct. It would be more appropriate to, stay, to say, and then focus the direction back to your key message. Um, Another thing is if you don't know something, it's totally okay to say so. Uh, you can let the reporter know you don't have that information, but you'll check back and get it to them as soon as possible. Um, you can let the reporter know where to find that information, if it's on your website or if it's on um, the Secretary of State website. It's totally okay to answer honestly here. And then finally, as I mentioned before, Nothing you say is really off the record, even during that small talk where the reporter isn't recording you, um, there is a potential that they can quote you. So if you say it, it is fair game. And we've been talking a lot about those key messages. Um, so this is kind of what makes the perfect answer. Number one are those key messages um, that you want to get across first and foremost. Second are facts and figures that will help support those key messages, like statistics about the summer reading gap um, and, and the distance that kids fall behind if they aren't reading during the summer. Those are going to be really important statistics to help back up any claims about summer reading and talking about the importance of reading during the summer. And then number three, examples. We all love stories. It really humanizes the topic. Um, so any anecdotes you have or examples of real life experiences are going to be so great to tie in to the interview. Um, and of course, we don't know these. We don't know what experiences you have. We can sit down with you beforehand to help you nail those down. Um, but it's 
totally okay to take the key messages and tie in your personal experiences um, to give that extra oomph when you answer, which the reporters are always, always looking for. So part of our media training is talking about how to handle difficult questions. Um, luckily, summer reading is a great topic to talk about. Um, and hopefully there won't be too many questions that are framed in a negative light that you will have to kind of dodge and avoid and bring back um, focus to the positives and the key messages you're trying to communicate. Um, but what we like to do is prepare you anyway and have you set up to know how to handle that if it does um, happen. So I provided a few different examples here, um, but what you'll see is you start with your answer um, by letting them know, you know, not quite maybe that's not the information you have isn't quite correct, but then you add in a bridge to redirect to your key message. So maybe the reporter is asking about, um, about disparities um, and maybe kids who are in lower income areas don't have access to reading or maybe they see a bigger gap during summer reading, um, a bigger learning gap after summer reading. So if that's a question they ask, you can say, yes, um, we have seen data that reports there is a bigger difference when students don't have access to local libraries um, during their summer vacation. And what's interesting is the White House says you only need to read five books during the summer to um, lessen that disparity or lessen that gap. I'm just making this stuff up as I go, but um, you can kind of see how we like to frame it where, you know, you repeat the question and let them know that's not quite right. You bridge it and then you redirect to your key message. So some other examples would be I don't have that information right now, but what I do know is, or that may be true in some cases, but in ours, um, and then redirect again to that key message. Another similar tactic is zooming. Um, so this is very similar to bridging, but it's used when the reporter either asks something very specific that you don't have the information to, or very broad that you don't have the information to. Um, so if they ask something really, really broad, maybe they're asking about reading rates nationwide or um, you know, about the access to libraries nationwide, and you don't know that information, um, you can zoom in to focus on your county, your, your library branch as a whole. Um, so focusing in, redirects again um, to kind of the, the, the main point of the interview, which is talking again about summer reading at your library. Um, then if they ask something specific to your library that you don't have the information to, you can zoom out um, and kind of give those more broad answers. So that would be talking about general trends or sharing information um, about summer reading that has been shared by the White House or by other um, library associations in the country. So again, taking the focus from something small to a wider range of information that can be used to kind of um, get away from any negative specifics or when you can't answer something really broad, narrowing down to something really great you're doing at the local level. Okay, and as I mentioned um, earlier on, we would take a look at a briefing document, which is what we do to set you up for success prior to your interview. Um, I know this is pretty small. I had two on here before and I deleted one in hopes that it would look a little bigger when I stretched it out, but I know it's pretty small. Um, but this is an example of a briefing document that is real. Um, this is a, a briefing document that we've prepared for Donna for an interview she has tomorrow. Um, this is over the phone. So luckily for her, she doesn't have to remember to wear jewel tones or to remember to smile or to look at the, the reporter. Um, she can just relax and, and talk over the phone. Um, 
But no matter what type of interview, whatever format it is, this is the information that will be provided. We set you up with information on the outlet, um, sometimes giving you a background on the reporter and, and some previous stories they've written, um, providing the date and time of the interview, the location and how to get there. So um, for this one, David, the host will call Donna at 8.30, 8.28 for their interview at 8.30. If it's Zoom, we'll be sure to add in that Zoom information. Um, if it's in person, you'll have the address. Even if it's at your local library, you'll have the address there. Um, and then going into the topic of the segment. Um, so this is where all your key messages will go back to. And then, as we mentioned, we like to provide sample questions and talking points for you to reference. Um, usually these briefing documents are given to the spokesperson at least 24 hours in advance so they can prepare. Um, luckily, like I've mentioned, you guys are experts. You know what's going on at your local library. You know some are reading inside and out. So a lot of this will just be a refresher for you. And you can take um, whatever is written and tweak it to your own voice. Um, but these questions will help kind of guide the conversation um, and help you put your own thoughts together as well. Um, so I know I have prepared a few um, talking points for us to review together um, and then practice with some questions that I've also come up with. Um, but I did wanna open it up to any questions from you guys. Um, usually I go a little slower when I have somebody else, but once I'm in the talking mode, I just talk, talk, talk. So um, I think we definitely have time for questions if there are any. Um, so if you wanna drop them into the chat or just speak up, I'm totally open to answering anything. Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself and ask Ilana any questions you might have. I had a question. Um, the questions, you know, the briefing document that you provided me, are those questions that the uh, reporter provided to you? Or are those things that you expect him to ask? Or are they things that you both agreed would be addressed? So they are things that um, we predict he will ask since the, I'll go back to it as well. Okay. So we could see. Yeah, it, it's pretty small, but. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry about that, everybody. That's okay. I, I will send a copy to Donna of this updated document um, so you guys can review it at your leisure as well. But, um, so these questions, there's just two here that you can see. I think we provided, usually we try to give five questions that they are likely to ask. Um, and as I mentioned, typically reporters, their, their practices, best practice is not to share questions in advance. Um, so sometimes we can ask and they will be nice enough to share, you know, what, what, what their thoughts are. Um, but these are questions that we've predicted that they could ask. So since the topic is summer reading, it goes through kind of the ins and outs of the program, um, as well as talks about some of those main components of the summer slide and why it's beneficial to participate. Um, so it is kind of a high level interview and you can choose to go into it as deep as you want to, but that's what's nice about um, talking about the program as a whole. So in summer reading, I would love to hear from the participants. Have you ever received a question from a reporter that threw you for a loop? If you have, just go ahead and put it in the chat. I would love to hear what, what questions kind of caught you off guard if you were talking about summer reading. I'm trying to think of what might catch me off guard. So I love their tips. And, you know, um, since we are Blavage and the PR team is working with you all um, to promote summer reading, we are looking at some of the programs happening at your local libraries and do want to share that with media if it's something that we think is timely and interesting um, and that they would want to cover. Um, so if you have anything coming up, we'd love to hear it. 
Um, and then, of course, like I mentioned, the whole process, we pitch all the angles, um, we set up the interviews and then help prep you. So um, please, if you have anything, don't be afraid uh, to share that. Yeah, why don't you share a couple of examples of uh, stories that you've already helped facilitate. I know we did an interview with Channel 12 News, Trem Mai, right? And that yes. was the Maricopa County Library did an interview with her. Um, we had an article on the Apache Junction Library because they have a cool program called Books and Brew uh, that, that was featured in a local paper. Can you think of others? You want to give us an example? Yeah, those are the two kind of local library programs we've highlighted. Um, and then we did do a um, early announcement of the summer reading program through a typical press release. Um, so that has like the who, what, where, when, and why about the summer reading program. Um, and that has been circulating. We will do another bigger push now as um, it really officially kicks off at the beginning of June. Um, and then another tactic we use are writing opinion pieces. So we did work with Donna to um, create a really, really great piece about summer reading um, and kind of the benefits of it. And so that's been published in a lot of local papers and we have a few more um, expected to come out in June. So um, hopefully we'll get to share that with you guys as well. Um, but yeah, the, the um, one with the Maricopa County Library and then the Apache Junction have been kind of the two program highlights that we've been looking at so far. Right, and if you are featured in your local paper, I would love to see the link. Just send them over to me and I'll push them out on Arizona Library's Facebook page because we love to share the marketing that you guys may have your own connections with your local press. Does anyone else have questions that they'd like to bring up today before we finish up? And I know there are a few less participants um, now. So I will show you guys kind of the, the layout of the practice. Um, we do like to do a practice when it is kind of just a one-on-one -on -one media training or a few less people where we can um, go over answers with you and kind of give an explanation of how to improve or better phrase it. Um, but like I said at the beginning, you can totally use this on your own um, and do some kind of homework. Um, if, if you have the time, if it's something you're interested in doing. Um, but these next two slides, the first one here, click, oh, okay. <laughs> so I've drafted some key messages. Um, and like we showed in the briefing document, these would kind of go underneath any projected questions. Um, so if we were doing a practice, I would give you a few minutes to look these over um, and kind of pick out key points um, throughout these talking points that you would want to get across in an interview. Um, luckily, like we mentioned, you guys know this information. Um, so anything talking about the actual um, process of the summer reading, I know you have that down pat. Um, so after you had some moments to look over the key messages, we would go through some practice questions. And um, Donna, this is where I tried to come up with some that would trick you or would have to make you do some bridging or something. Okay, or we can out. practice and everyone <laughs> can laugh at my answers. And, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, you know, um, we, do you remember when I asked, I, I'm reading a question in the chat. It said, would Lavage arrange an interview for libraries outside of Maricopa County? And that is a possibility. It just depends on who bites, right? So you may remember I sent out a little poll to the library staff saying, tell me what you're doing because we might highlight you. So we pulled a few of those answers and we kind of pitch it or Lavage was nice enough to do this, kind of take a few of those and kind of pitch it to the media, but we still have to wait and see if they bite, you know, like if they will pick it up and then we go from there. So it is a possibility that it could be, and that's up 
Uh, that's Betsy up in Pine Top asking that. Yep, so it's a possibility. All right, so Alana, you can go ahead and ask me your questions and I'll yeah. do my best to answer. Okay, and to be clear, some of these are totally random questions. Um, when a reporter speaks to you, they usually follow the flow of what you've already answered to follow up with any additional questions, but I did try to throw in some left fielders here. Um, but we'll just go through like the first four and then um, see where, how you feel after that. Um, okay. So what is the Arizona State Summer Reading Program? So the Arizona Summer Reading Program is one of the state's major annual community literacy efforts. The theme this summer is Oceans of Possibilities. The program encourages readers of all ages to read 20 minutes a day and offers uh, library, and libraries offer events like outdoor water fun, scavenger hunts, story times with a focus on animals and other sea creatures, uh, bingo or art projects and other STEM programming. Participants include kids, teens, babies, adults, all ages are invited to sign up and keep track of the total minutes read throughout the summer, either depending on your library by using a paper game board or uh, registering their minutes online. Awesome. Yeah, I think you answered the, the next question too. Um, who can participate in your program. So. Oh, yes. Well, it's yeah. great for all ages. Uh, many libraries have specific programs for pre-readers. Even little babies can participate because they need to be read to from the birth. Kids ages 5 to 11. You know, we've talked about how in the past how important uh, keeping those reading skills up are during the summer. And teens. Teens love to volunteer at the library. They're often a big help to library staff but they can also find books that are interesting to them and explore things that they are interested in instead of having to just read what they're assigned at school. Summer is a great time for kids to read things that they love. And adults can continue to read. Um, you know, reading is really good for all ages, but did you know that uh, it has benefits for adults too? Reading reduces stress, slows the progress, progress of age-related memory loss and boost sleep quality. Good, I can hear some of those key messages too, so I really like how you're throwing those in. Um, I'm going to do throw you for a loop now okay. maybe. So child development experts say kids need less screen time and more time outdoors. Doesn't summer reading interfere with this? Not at all. You know, um, summer reading also includes activities at the library and many libraries offer outdoor story times, uh, water activity days and other uh, obstacle courses, uh, reading fun, but they can read outdoors on a picnic blanket or they can take their book on vacation and listen to an audio book as they're traveling. You know, especially in this time and time that we're in, life can be stressful and building in a habit of reading can really bring some comfort and stability to families that may be feeling stress. So going to the library, checking out some books, taking them home and reading 20 minutes every day is a really great way to help kids feel safe and build that love of reading. Great, again, kind of recircling, circling back to those key messages and bringing uh, back the message to the summer reading program, talking about how kids can participate and how easy it is to get started. So awesome. Um, let's see here, should kids or should parents be selecting challenging books for their kids? Does it matter? You know, summer is a great time for kids to read books that they are interested in. If kids read, pick out books that they want to read, they're more likely to read every day. And it's okay to read the same book over and over again. Kids love repetition. And for really young children, the repetition helps them learn and build their vocabulary and comprehension. Awesome. Um, let's see, maybe another difficult question. Um, yeah. 
how are you making reading more accessible for underprivileged underprivileged children or children that don't have access to a local library? There are a many online programs that offer ebooks, but also um, libraries have outreach. Some of them have bookmobiles, bike, uh, what is the bike called? Um, that's a good question. I'm going to have to develop a really smooth answer for that. <laughs> but we could also talk about um, how in this, these economic, these challenging economic times, the library is one place where all of the materials are free to use. Participating in summer reading is free, checking out library books is free, and doing the activities is free. So it's a great opportunity for parents to offer um, enrichment activities, even though they may not be able to afford to go to a lot of different summer camps, the library is a great alternative. In addition, many libraries offer cultural passes, which are a pass that you can check out, which will allow you to enter a museum or other cultural uh, venue for free. Awesome. And that's um, something else good to note when you're speaking with the reporter. Um, you know, you, you did a little pause there, um, noting that you'll have to find a good answer, but I think that little pause gave you a moment to collect your thoughts and, and present a new answer. Um, so in interviews, when you're speaking with a reporter and they ask you a question, if it's taped, um, you can take time to, you know, think for a little, you know, a few seconds to think, collect your thoughts, and then answer. Um, if it is recorded, they're going to edit that pause out. They're going to take those little snippets. The only time you don't have a chance to do that is if it's a live interview. Um, and those happen a lot less frequently. So that's a good note. Um, and I think that answer was really great as well. Thanks. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you want to run through any more, but I, I would just encourage anybody else um, participating to yeah, do, do a little practice if you want to um, look at those key messages first and then run through some practice questions with, you know, a coworker, a partner, a friend. Um, you can see if they can come up with something else to trick you. It can be a fun game. So. Yeah, I would love <laughs> to hear what others' response would be to, can kids participate even they though they don't have a local library nearby? So if you have a good answer for that, just drop it in the chat so I can put it in my hat of possible answers. And how are you re making reading more accessible for underprivileged children? I would love to hear anybody's thoughts on that. And you can unmute yourself and just share it or just drop it in the chat. Is that cheating? They're gonna give me the answers. No, no. <laughs> I'm all about collaboration. There so. you go, collaborations. <laughs> Librarians love to share. So any answers or suggestions you guys have for great answers to these questions? What about working with the local school libraries? To yeah. Them involved if they can't, if there's not like a local library around them? Yeah, that would be good. We're also going to have our bookmobile at like some local parks this summer. Ah, so, so that's great because you have that example. And I could say something like many libraries have outreach opportunities where they go to housing projects or to parks and they have pop up libraries where families can get involved. Definitely. Yeah. And I put in this question um, more for my benefit, so I can pick your guys' brains, but what are your book recommendations for the summer? That's a question I want to know. Yeah. And it's a question you can definitely do small talk with for That's your right. um, reporter beforehand. All right, librarians, we know <laughs> you have some suggestions. Beth says that... Um, when we're talking about accessibility and underprivileged, many libraries have gone fine free. So if they can only get to the library occasionally, um, they won't be penalized for bringing the books back maybe a little bit later than the due date because they are fine free. So, so what are your book recommendations? Go ahead and drop it in the chat there. And about the fine free libraries, um, is that, 
the case too, even if a book has um, kind of a, a waiting list on it? Yeah, I mean, it depends on the library, but I would say more than half of Arizona libraries are now find free. Oh, I'm, I'm totally guessing on that, but I think I've heard more and more libraries going to find free. Treasure Island, it's perfect for the ocean theme. Lots of great uh, picture books and nonfiction books as well. Like I heard that one library is doing a Shark Week event. I imagine there's lots of great nonfiction shark books. The Aquanaut by Dan Santat. These are great suggestions. Rainbow Fish is a good one. I used to, when I read that when I was little, I was like, why did they give all their scales away, mom? <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, sharing is important. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Globe's book club books are for adults where the crawdad sings. And in July, it'll be Beach Read by Emily Henry. Is there a genre that you see um, checked out of the libraries one more than the other? I'm sure that would be a question that um, reporters would ask. And that's a great example of one that I would have to Zoom because since I'm not in a specific library, I would have to probably Zoom out a little bit. Mm -hmm. and talk about fiction and nonfiction, and how it's a great opportunity to read whatever they want. Definitely. Yep. All right. Well, anything, any other final tips, Alana, you want to leave this group? Um, you know, I would just, again, encourage you to reach out to Donna, reach out to me and, and my, my counterpart, Megan, if you have any questions, if a reporter reaches out to you um, and you want help coordinating that interview, we are working with the Arizona State Library through the summer. So we're definitely here as a, a resource. Um, and yeah, I think the best thing to take away from the media training is you have the knowledge, you're the expert and they wanna know what you know. So just take a moment to breathe, um, smile and then go back to those key messages that you probably already know. Um, so just remember that and you should be, you should be good and you'll be a pro in no time. <laughs> Thanks so much, Alana. If anyone else has questions, yeah, please go ahead and email me and we will uh, see what else we can do to support your libraries in, you know, helping build awareness that summer reading in libraries is is uh, alive and well and it's the best place to be in the summer so yeah and thank you all for letting me talk your ears off today i know i can go by chatting really quick so i appreciate it <laughs> thanks so much thank you